All right, in this video, we're asked to find a bunch of different information here, critical points, intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, and local extrema of the function. So one thing you should always do, even though it doesn't explicitly ask about it, is think about the domain of the function. So the domain is not about the derivative of the function. The domain is just about the function and inputs and outputs. So a lot of times students don't even think about that, but that is relevant when you think about critical points and intervals when you go to write your answer uh, for what it actually asks about. All right, so this is just a polynomial function. Domain of this function is all real numbers, so I'm just going to write that in interval notation here. Um, there might be some other things that you think about from the original function before you start thinking about the derivative. Things like end behavior of the function. Those are really limits. As x approaches infinity, the outputs of this function also approach positive infinity, which tells you that the right-hand side of the graph is up and limit as x approaches negative infinity of this function is negative infinity, which tells you that on the left end of the graph, the graph goes down. Uh, other things maybe that would be relevant that you might determine just from the function are some points, xy points. We might find some specific xy points we want to look at later, but maybe also intercepts, x and y intercepts that you might think about the y-intercept is always easy to find. You're just plugging in 0. So you're plugging in 0 for x, so you'll get y equals 1. So that's the point 0, 1. The x-intercept sometimes is easy to find and sometimes not. It's difficult to find on this one. You're putting in 0 for y and finding the x values that work for that. Uh, particularly if you don't have a calculator, this is difficult to solve unless you know a cubic formula. If this were a quadratic equation, you could use quadratic formula. If this were easily factorable, you could maybe factor it and set it equal to zero. This one's difficult to solve without a calculator unless you know cubic formula, which is a mess. So you probably don't want to use that. So this is maybe difficult. But I know from algebra, you should know from algebra, that this polynomial of degree 3 has somewhere between 1 and 3 real zeros. Uh, if it has non-real zeros, they would come in pairs. So if I have any non-real zeros, there would be two of them. I might have three x-intercepts or real zeros, or I might only have one. Uh, so this is difficult without a calculator. You could use a calculator to, to help find those, though. But I'm going to just do this without a calculator and find what we can find without necessarily needing that. Okay, so all of that stuff, though, is really from the function, and it didn't really explicitly ask us for any of that stuff, but it is all helpful in answering what it actually did ask us. So all of this stuff that is asked about up here, critical points, where a function is increasing and decreasing, and classifying extrema are all things that you can find from the first derivative of the function. So you want to go ahead and find that derivative. All right, and then critical points are places where the derivative exists, I'm sorry, where the derivative does not exist or is equal to zero, but the original function does exist. So critical points, the x-coordinates of the critical points will be where the derivative does not exist. There are none of those for this problem. This derivative exists for all values of x. And where the derivative is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and set that equal to 0. And this factors nicely. You can factor out a 3x and set each factor equal to 0. 3x equals 0 will give you x equals 0. Or x minus 4 equals 0 will give you x equals 4. All right, so those are the x-coordinates of my critical points. Remembering that I said that from the original function, you can always use the function to get points, input, output, pairs. And so these might be input-output pairs I might be interested in finding. I happen to have already found one of them. This x equals 0, I did plug in already and figured that out. Um, so I'll just list that here. We already did that, though. Uh, so when I put in x equals 0, I got 1. Uh, you can put in x equals 4 here. 
4 cubed is 64 minus 6 times 16, 96. So that's negative uh, 32 plus 1. So negative 31 is the y coordinate at that point. Um, all right, so those are x, y points. I got those from the original function. The reason I did that, though, is because they're important points on the graph. They're critical points where the function might have a local maximum or minimum. All right, from here, you want to take your critical points and make a sign chart to classify where the function's increasing and decreasing. And you want to be clear about what you're looking at signs of. Uh, so I am looking at signs of the first derivative because that tells me about slope. And if you think about slope being positive or negative, that's telling you about whether the graph is going up or down, increasing or decreasing. So I'm just making a number line here, identifying where those critical points are on the number line. That splits my number line into three intervals, and I'm looking for signs of that first derivative. So I'm looking at f prime of x, not at these points. I already figured out what f prime of x is doing at those points, but on either side of those points. So when x is less than 0, when x is between 0 and 4, and when x is bigger than 4. All right, and I'm going to actually just use the factored form. I factored it down here, but I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it up here. Factored form of the first derivative, because then maybe it's easier to think about things being positive and negative. Uh, so when I put in a number, I'm going to start over here, a number bigger than 4, like 5. I don't really care so much about what the numerical output of this derivative is. I just care whether it's positive or negative. So when I put in a number bigger than 4, this will be positive. And this factor, this x minus 4, will also be positive when I put in a number like 5 or 100 or 98.7 or whatever, something bigger than 4. Positive times positive. So that first derivative there will be positive. When I put in numbers between 0 and 4, this first factor, 3x, will still be positive. But the second factor, when I'm putting in numbers between 0 and 4, the second factor will be negative. Like when I put in 2 or something like that, this will be negative. So I'll have a positive times a negative, which is a negative. So again, these are signs of this first derivative. And then when I put in a number less than, less than 0, like negative 1 or something like that, uh, 3 times that negative number will be negative. And then this factor will also be negative. So I'll have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. And what that tells me about is what the f of x function is doing. So where the first derivative is positive, the slope is positive. So the first derivative being positive tells me that the original function is increasing. And then where the first derivative is negative, the original function is decreasing. And then again, where the first derivative is positive, the original function is increasing. All right, and if you just visualize that, like I've kind of done here with the arrows, then it's easy to see what's happening at these critical points. So if you have a function that's going up and then down, then this would be a high point in that region of the graph. So that's where we would have a local maximum. And then around 4, the function's going down and then up, and that will be a local minimum. They're not absolute extrema. I know that because of these limit end behavior things that I thought about. The right-hand side of the graph goes up forever, and the left-hand side of the graph goes down forever. So I know that the graph doesn't have any absolute extrema, but it does have a local max and a local minimum, and I can determine where the function's increasing, decreasing. So at this point, I've done all of the work to be able to answer the questions that were asked. I just need to answer it correctly, and there are a few details to think about here. All right, so critical points, anytime we talk about points, that's really x, y points. So the x coordinates of the critical points I found from here, but technically if I want to talk about them as points, they're x, y points. So you get x, y points from the original function over here. So critical points, I have two of them, 0, 1, and 4, negative 31. Occasionally, questions will be worded where they, where they will just ask you for the x-coordinates of the critical points, and in that case, you could just say 0 and 4. Uh, we're also asked for local extrema. A local maximum of the function, so technically, local extrema are output values of the function. So the local maximum, this graph here, I kind of have it labeled at zero, but that's really the x-coordinate. The local maximum really is the output value of the function at that x-coordinate. So the local maximum is 1, 
and that occurs at x equals zero. And I have a local minimum output value of the function at x equals four. And then I also am asked to give intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. And so I just need to write intervals from what I've got here again using some of this stuff that I thought about before, making sure that I think about how far those intervals actually go. So negative infinity to positive infinity splitting at zero and four. So our function is increasing on uh, the interval from negative infinity to zero and the interval from four to infinity and decreasing on this interval between 0 and 4. All right, so this is answering what was asked. Notice I have used both the original function and the first derivative to do that, kind of going back and forth. But you want to be clear about what information you're getting from which function. Original function is really about inputs and outputs and maybe behavior of what those inputs and outputs are doing as you kind of reach the edges of the graph. The derivative information is really all about slope. So that's about when the function is going uphill and downhill or switching from going uphill to downhill, so neither. All right, so just this is hard sometimes for students to keep straight. My advice is to keep your work organized like this so you're clear about what information you're getting from one function and what information you're getting from another function and also to label what is it that's positive or negative. It's the first derivative and what is it that's increasing and decreasing so that you can keep things straight, especially as we layer on more and more content that goes along with this.